In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to download and install TensorFlow GPU on Windows 8 and Windows 10. Now, this is only going to work if you have a CUDA enabled graphics card. Now, if you don't know what that means, the way that you can check this, first of all, is if your card is a NVIDIA graphics card and if it is on this list. So if you're not sure if your card has CUDA, typically all of the newer cards within the past three or four years that are any NVIDIA cards do have that enabled. But to check, you can go to the link that I'm going to have in the description down below and look through this list to attempt to find your graphics card. Now, if you can't find your graphics card at all on this web page, don't bother attempting this as this is not going to work. You do need CUDA for TensorFlow GPU to work on your machine. Okay. So now that we've done that, I'm just going to go over that this is a very tedious process. This takes a long time and the steps that you have to do to do this uh, are very important that they're done in the correct order. So please watch through the entire video. And if you're not sure about something I'm doing, pause and rewatch, because if you do something in the wrong order, this is going to have this is going to force you to restart the process, which I personally had to do when I was installing this. And it is a pain. So the first step and the first thing we need to do is we need to uninstall all of our NVIDIA graphics cards and uh, what do you call it? Drivers, sorry, not graphics cards. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, whatever the uninstall list is on your computer and just find anything that says NVIDIA. So for example, I'm going to keep going and you can see I have a ton of NVIDIA drivers. So I'm not going to do this because I already have it installed, but uninstall all of these. Now, don't worry if you have your graphics driver on here, we can reinstall them afterwards. But to save us a lot of time, uninstall anything that says NVIDIA. After we're finished that, go to your C drive and your program files times 86. And again, find anything that says NVIDIA and delete it. So in this case, NVIDIA Corporation, just delete this folder. All right, go back, go to now your other program files and find anything again that says NVIDIA. So NVIDIA Corporation, NVIDIA GPU computing tool and delete these folders. We can reinstall them afterwards. This is just to save you a lot of headache. Okay, so once we're finished with that, the next step is to download and install Visual Studio 2017. Now, all of the links that I'm going to be showing you here are in the description down below, and there's a very brief description of all of the steps that you have to take. So if you get lost, you can read the description. But this link right here is going to lead you to download Visual Studio 2017. Download and install the free version and just do whatever it recommends for you. So once you've installed that, we can move on to the next step. Now, the next step is to check the current version of CUDA. So we need to install a CUDA driver to our system so that our graphics card is going to be enabled to use that and to work with TensorFlow. So go to this web page that again, I'm going to have in the description down below and check what this version says. So it says NVIDIA GPU drivers check this version. So CUDA 9.0 requires that you have a driver of 384.x or higher. And then CUDA Toolkit, it will tell you what version of CUDA is currently supported by TensorFlow. And this is the version that you're going to have to download if you're, um, what, if you're not watching this recently and this says like CUDA 10.0 or 11.0, then that's what you're going to have to download. In this case, I'm going to have to download version 9.0. So check this web page and then move on to the next link that is going to be in the description. This next link is uh, to download and install CUDA. Sorry, that's the wrong page. So this is CUDA Toolkit 9.0. Now, I'm going to put this link in the description down below. Again, if you have to download CUDA 10.0 or a different version, please download the correct version. I will leave the link that, what do you call it, goes to all of the different versions so you can pick which one. So first, we're going to select our target platform, Windows. And you can see that right now it's asking me to download 10.0. That's not the one I want. I want 9.0. So I'm going to go back and find 9.0. Here we go. Cool. CUDA toolkits 9.0. So I'll leave two links, one for 9.0 and one for all the other versions. Okay. And I'll label them in the description. We're going to click on windows and you're going to leave that and just click version 10 and you can download and install that and run through the installation process. Now I'm not going to do that as I already have that installed, but once that's done, you can move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is downloading and installing CUDNN. Okay, now I'm going to leave this link obviously in the description again, and you need to install the correct version for your version of CUDA. So you can see here on this page, we have 10.0, 9.2 and 9.0. Now, obviously, for we're using 9.0. So we are going to download from this link. 
Once you click this link, it should give you a folder that looks like this in your download bar. Once you get that folder, just open it up and you can see that we have a folder called CUDA. Now we're going to move to our desktop. We're going to extract this folder just by dragging it on there. And you can see that once we open this up, we have three folders, bin, include, and lib. What we need to do now is open up a new file explorer and we need to navigate to program files. So C drive program files. Now you can see here that you should now have two folders. So after installing CUDA and after, ins uh, or sorry, just after installing CUDA, I guess you should have a folder that says NVIDIA Corporation and NVIDIA GPU computing toolkit. If you don't have this one, it's fine, but make sure you have this computing toolkit. We're going to go into this folder, we're going to click on CUDA, and then we're going to click on version 9.0. And you can see that we have three similar folders. We have bin, we have lib, and we have include. What we need to do is open up the first of all the bin folder and we need to open up the bin folder over here and we're simply going to drag CUDNN into this folder. So you can drag it and it should just copy in there. I already have it in there. That's why it was causing an issue, right? So we'll just replace file and destination. Okay, continue. And there we go. Now it's in, all right? Now we need to do the same thing with include. So we're going to go back and go to include take all the f files that are in include and simply drag them in here like this, replace file and destination. I already have them in there, but I'll just go through it with you guys. Okay. Next one, lib, same thing, time 64. So we'll go back here to lib. We're going to go inside the time 64 folder inside over here. And we're just going to drag this in, replace file and destination and just click yes. Okay. So that's all with that CUDNN and that is officially now installed in our system. Now the next step is to add something to our path. So to do this, we need to edit our environment variables. You can find that just by searching in your bottom windows bar. So we go to edit environment variables. We're going to go to environment variables and we're going to go to path. Now in here, we're going to click edit and we're going to click new. Now the path that you're going to add is going to be this path and this path. Okay. Now I'm going to leave these in the description. I'm also going to put them up on the screen right now in case you would rather type them out. Now these two paths, this version number is going to change depending on what version of CUDA you have. If you have version 8.0, this is going to be eight. If you have version 10.0, this is going to be 10. Other than this, these should be the same except for that version number. So just check that when you're installing that you have the right version here in your path. And again, these are in the description. Once that's done, click OK click OK. And since you've changed something, you're going to click apply and OK. And that is all for downloading and installing uh, CUDA and CUDNN or whatever that name is. OK. The next step for us is to download and install Anaconda. Now, this is a Python distribution, which allows us to set up virtual environments so that we can run TensorFlow. Now, TensorFlow currently is only supported on Python 3.5 or 3.6, I believe. So for this video, we're going to be working in Python 3.5. It really doesn't matter as long as you have a version greater than three. Um, there's not really a huge difference in Python, just so you know. So you can download any version of Anaconda that you want. But when we set up the virtual environment, we're going to use 3.5. So download and install Anaconda. I already have it downloaded here. 3.7 version is fine. And then open it up, run it and run through the installation process. Now I already have it installed, so I'm not going to go through this, but just notice that actually, let's go through it quickly. Um, just me. Let's see. Ah, see, it's already there. So it's not going to let me do that, but pretty much what you guys need to make sure that you click when you're installing that is add Anaconda to path. It's going to give you like some red text and say, are you sure you want to do this? Just click yes. Make sure that you add Anaconda to your path. Okay. Make sure that you do that. Otherwise, these next steps are not going to work for you. Okay, so now I'm assuming you have Anaconda installed, you have CUDA installed, you have Visual Studio installed, and before that, you uninstalled all NVIDIA drivers. If you're caught up with me, we're going to move to the next step, and this is the easier stuff. So we're just going to run our command prompt and pop it up like this, and we're simply just going to type Conda to test that everything is working. Now, once you test this, if you don't get any error messages, you've successfully completed <laughs> the beginning part of the tutorial, tutorial at least so far, um, so you can continue on. What we're going to do now is we're going to set up a new virtual environment and get ready to install TensorFlow into that environment, because up until now, we haven't even installed TensorFlow. So we're going to type conda hyphen n, and then 
we're going to give it a name. So you can call yours TensorFlow. I would recommend I already have a virtual environment called TensorFlow. So I'm just going to call this tutorial. Okay. And this is going to be the name of the virtual environment that you're going to use when you are using um, TensorFlow. So name it something that you're going to remember. Okay. And then you're going to type Python equals 3.5. Now, don't think you can put any number here. If you put a number greater than 3.5, I will not guarantee that this is going to work for you as TensorFlow is only supported on certain versions of Python as of today. When you're done that, click enter. No, what is it? Conda and no command conda tutorial. Ah, sorry. I need to add create. My bad. Conda create hyphen n tutorial. And then Python equals 3.5. My apologies about that. Okay, so once you've done that, it should start saying solving environment and everything should start working. Now, once this is done, it's going to go through installing a bunch of stuff. Uh, you're just going to continue to click yes and wait for this to finish. Okay, so now that everything is downloaded and installed, we need to activate the virtual environment. So this is what you're going to do anytime you want to install a new package into a virtual environment. You first have to activate that environment, especially if you're using Anaconda. Okay, so we're going to type activate and then the name of our environment. So whatever you named your environment, in this case, I named mine tutorial. Okay, so we activate tutorial, it should give you the little brackets like this. And that's how you know that everything is working. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install TensorFlow. So to do this, we're simply going to type pip install hyphen hyphen and then ignore and then hyphen installed hyphen hyphen upgrade and then tensor flow gpu like that okay hit that it's going to run through an installation process that will most likely take a few minutes and once that's finished we can move on to the next step Okay, so now that we have finished installing TensorFlow within our package, or sorry, within our virtual environment, there are a few other packages we need to install. Now, I recommend that you should install all the packages you think you're going to use right now, just to save you some time so you don't have to go back and reinstall packages. But one that you're definitely going to want is pip install and then Keras. Okay, so go ahead, click that, and you should run through this and same thing, wait for this to finish, and then we're going to install one more package. Okay, so now that Keras is installed, you have the option to also install the packages I'm about to type. So I'm just going to say, sorry, import uh, pip install. And then I would recommend you install pandas uh, because you're probably going to have to use that when you're reading in data and creating data frames, especially if you're using any machine learning stuff, which I assume is why you're installing TensorFlow GPU version. I would also recommend you install NumPy. I'm not sure if it automatically comes with TensorFlow, but if it doesn't, you should install that while we are already in the installation process. Now that this is finished, I will show you um, what to do if you wanted to get back into your Conda environment to install stuff, say you forgot or you, there's another package you want. You could just go here to your command prompt and simply type activate and then the name of your virtual environment and it will activate your environment and you can now go and install all your things. So if I just type Python in here, you can see it says Python 3.5.6, we get Anaconda and I can test out to see if everything is working by importing TensorFlow. And you can see that we haven't received any error messages yet. It should actually go to the next line. Yes, there we go. So importing TensorFlow was successful. And that's how you know that you have officially installed TensorFlow into the virtual environment. Now, if that's all you needed to do and you know how to work with TensorFlow, feel free to click off the video. But if you want a quick tutorial on how to actually use this virtual environment, I suggest you follow along. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up PyCharm, which is the IDE that I like to use. I know this is not the best for data science, but I'm going to show you how you can actually use your virtual environment and where to find it. And this will work in other editors as well. So I'm just going to create a new project and I don't know, let's just call it. Yeah, untitled is fine for right now. Now, where it says project interpreter, you're going to want to change this to an existing interpreter. Now you can see that I already have a virtual environment called web scrape, but I'm just going to set up a new one. So click existing interpreter, click this dot dot dot, and then go to conda environment. Again, click this dot dot dot, and you're going to find your conda environment. Now your conda environment should be in your C drive, users, your username, and there should be a anaconda folder like this. So this is going to be wherever you installed your anaconda. 
Now within here, there's gonna be something called ENVs, okay? Inside ENVs, you're gonna have your virtual environments. So you can see that I have four, New Web, TensorFlow, Tutorial, and Web Scrape. You will have one if you haven't made a second one. Open up your desired virtual environment like this, and then find the file that says pythonw.exe. So click on that one, and this is gonna be the one that you select, you click OK. Now this is going to be your project interpreter, and this is how it works with Pygame. Now if you'd like this to be available to all projects, you could say make available to all projects, other than that, just go ahead and click OK. And you've now officially, you can see that we have Python 3.5 and it is the tutorial Python uh, virtual environment, which means now that TensorFlow and all the packages you installed within there are going to be in this interpreter. So you could go ahead and click create if you're using PyCharm. And then if we wanted to test this out, I could create a new Python file really quickly. I uh, just call it Dell. And then I could simply import TensorFlow. Oh. It's going to take a second to scan the packages, but once that's done, we'll import TensorFlow. Okay, let's see. TensorFlow, and if you don't get any errors on that import statement and everything looks fine, you are working and you are good. So that has pretty much been it on how to install TensorFlow GPU. If you guys have any questions or something's not working, leave a comment down below. If you got lost in this tutorial and any errors popped up, I recommend you restart the process, watch the video again, and really make sure you're following everything. Again, all the links to everything that I do are in the description down below. And if this helped you out, I would really appreciate a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more helpful tutorials like this.